What's good? This is Dan Main with Unknown Artists, the Cyber Threat Division. Today I'm showing off my notes for the OSCP. So these notes were really beneficial. They helped tremendously with me passing the OSCP. As you see, I have machine name and I have several machines that I did within Hack the Box just stacked on top of each other. And um, here I have, if they're complete or not, I have here if they are um, Linux or not. And then I have like a tag so that I could say, hey, um, this box seems like it, it, it'll it require a responder or maybe not, maybe riding potato or et cetera. Initial scan there. One of the biggest things about these notes is just looking at the results. So I kind of figured that at some point, you know, the, the, boxes in the exam would eventually clash with what I had seen in, in Hack the Box, all right? Would clash with what I'd seen in PWK. And so if I had ev if I had a shot, a, uh, just a snapshot of every single in-map scan that I had ever had, ever during my studies, then, you know, I couldn't lose. So here, you know, after I started seeing like Apache 247 and 2.4, 2.4.29 so much i started realizing that hey apache's not going to be vulnerable um and then open ssh got so familiar with that that i was like no that's not going to be vulnerable either um and so yeah um eventually i started to you know notice stuff like mini serve or um what else vs ftpd like that that stuff just stuck out like a short thumb and I instantly jumped on top of it. A big one here was Nor Nostrum um, that I jumped on top of. So yeah, it my in-map game just was on point when I started using, um, looking at the results. And then going into step one, I wanna turn your attention to uh, a couple of boxes that I did that was like the OSCP boxes. Traverse X, um, I already did a video on this, but just having um, code execution, like a uh, vulnerable web app, if I'm not mistaken, um, I knew to, you know, use Metasploit. Um, you, and some people discourage using Metasploit. I encourage it if you have your one shot at using it, why not use it? And then there was another one that I wanted to show. Um, I think it was called Swag Shop. So Swag Shop also used a uh, an exploit sort of like that, that was a, a remote code execution and just walking through the things that I did. <clears throat> and I think I also had to edit the code as well. And I had to edit the code. I had to edit some code in the, on the OSCP. And so just having all of that information um, and having all that information in this Excel sheet gave me the confidence so that I could tell myself, hey, you've already done this before. You're good. You got it. And so that's kind of like another way that it helped. A th uh, another way that it helped, though, is, you know, I had all my payloads here. Um, these days, I definitely wouldn't try two SQL payloads. I would try a plethora of just all of the payloads. I wouldn't just try, you know, one equals one like this. I would try way more. But at the time I was really, really green when it came to SQL injection and, you know, and it is what it is there. Same thing for PHP filter wrappers, you know, these have more payloads than just that. But at the time, you know, I was basically going off of the payloads that PWK showed me. And, um, you know, based on PWK, I, I don't think PWK tried to stump the chump. Everything that they taught in the course was sufficient for me to pass the OSCP. It was just a matter of, you know, having all my notes here and, and knowing that I was, that I went overkill with my notes so that, you know, I was ready for anything. I was ready for the for the test to throw anything at me. Here's my privesk notes that I'm doing. The this is kind of like po post OSCP for me. I'm really trying to, you know, get really comfortable with priv privesk escalation and Active Directory. You know, you see here I was doing the object box and uh, hack the box, and then I remember in Bloodhound Oliver had force change password permission for smith so essentially if i logged in as smith from oliver they just you know it forced me to change the password so i could all i could you know upload power view here there and then 
um, run this command. So a good thing, again, just reiterating is I have, if I see force change password, I already have everything that I need to run there, you know, so I don't really have to rack my brain. Then for generic write, so generic write was, uh, I had to assign Maria uh, a SPN, if I'm not mistaken, um, or not. I don't, I don't think I did that there, but I could have, but I think instead I kind of cheated a little bit and I set a script to run um, each time she logged in or something like that. I don't know. It, it was something, something dealing with that, but I have the methodology there. So I don't ever have to go back and say, where did I put it? It's all in this file. You know, I know a lot of guys like to use stuff like um, Obsidian and um, they like to use OneNote and all of that, but that's too much clicking around. I, ha I literally have all of the boxes that I did that deals with Active Directory in this one page. So I can scroll up, scroll down, and I can compare intelligence to pivot AB. Excuse the screaming. Um, I can uh, compare intelligence to pivot API. Um, there was two boxes in here um, that I could compare um, as a matter of fact. So I dumped the GMSA password on intelligence and I did the same thing on search. Um, but as you see, I did it two separate ways. So if I ever see that, first of all, you're looking for a user that has, I think, what is it? Um, re g m s a pass or yeah and there it is so you'll see that in bloodhound so if you have that you can either go um in this direction where you basically um <clears throat> you dump g gmsa's password like that or you could do it um with this script um gmsa dumper and then just run this um syntax so i have even if i'm let's just say i'm at work and i'm I see that someone has read GMSA um, permissions, read GMSA password permissions, and I feel like it could um, lead to something dangerous happening on in Active Directory. I can show them there are two ways, and I've actually run through that. So in addition to helping me pass OSCP and eventually OSEP, um, I could show this at work and they can like, oh, wow, we might need to change that. And then I have the final privilege escalation, the, the final dagger in gray. Um, and in this case, uh, Maria had full rights over the domain admins group. So she basically made herself an owner and then added herself to domain admins. And then she could read root.txt. And then here I just changed his password because I had basically GMSA um, and I was good. And then this was constrained delegation where I basically um, logged in as the DC, um, which and that was really cool. And then I haven't finished this one yet. This one is really long pivot API. And then love was kind of, you know, out of the ordinary. It had a always install elevated permission. And I was just uh, uploaded a MSI, uh, which is basically an installer file. And it contained a payload and then it just, um, I just ran a net cat back to myself. So again, these these notes work for me because they're all here and I can compare boxes. And in my head, I'm like, all right, I run through all of these boxes and these are the, this is the left and right limits. These This is what's feasible when it comes to Windows Active Directory. So I shouldn't see anything outside of this. You know, I mean, minus, you know, stuff like golden tickets. I don't think I did a golden ticket. I had a chance to do a silver ticket here, um, but I didn't. Um, that was another way. But if I if I keep digging through, you know, some of my uh, work, I could probably find a, find one where I did a golden ticket and then just um, put it here and then compare it to everything else. Um, and then here I started some stuff. So with all of this being said, I want to share these notes, but I don't think they're ready for the entire public, like everybody. So if you want these notes and you want to start helping me build them out, you know, that was a real long box. What was that? Vault. Was that Active Direct? Was that um, OSCP? I mean, uh, PWK? Yeah, PWK for real right here. Put your holes around. So yeah um if you want to help me build them so that um they're complete let me know 
but I don't want people to just, you know, just to get them and not give back. So that's why I'm not going to put them out um, to the general public. Like, just put it in a description. Hit me up and say, hey, I want to see your notes. I want to use them and add to them. And then once you do that, I'll invite you to a Google um do a Google invite and then we could, you know, work on this thing together and then fill it out. Um, every box that I have listed here, I want to go ahead and do them. Normally what I'll do is just pull up a write up and then just copy and paste the uh, contents of the write up once I understand it. Um, so I don't just copy and paste without making sure I understand it. And then once I understand it, I go back and do the box. So that's kind of how I, uh, work these notes these notes will also help me pass the osep which i'm taking i should hear back hear something back from offensive security next week um and then i'm planning to start uh i don't want to use my own money that's why it's taking so long i'm trying to go through my employer now to see if they'll pay for it and they have convinced me that you know it's possible so i'm gonna wait and then you know i don't know what's gonna happen um, worst case scenario, I'm going to pay for it myself and, uh, my family's going to take a big blow <laughs> financially. And then I'm going to pat, I'm going to take it and I'm going to pass it. Um, I've, uh, talked to some guys that have already taken it and like, these were smart guys and they were studying, man. They were, they were, they were, they were really hustling hard to try to pass it, but I don't know anybody that's failed the OSEP. Um, but again, uh, that's not saying that it's easy. That's just saying like these, these guys are really getting after it. And plus they're already OSCP qualified. So it's like, they know what to, uh, they know how far to go and they know how to read and interpret what, um, offensive security is saying. Right. Um, if you're not, I feel like if you're not doing, if you're not reading the material and doing the exercises, you're at a, a, a huge disadvantage. Even if the exercises look boring or some of the exercises don't work and things like that, you know, just, just keep going. But you should be doing those exercises at the end of each lesson so that um, worst case scenario, you have them in your um, somewhere in your notes. Best case scenario, you have to actually do the, the uh, what the exercise is saying on the um, exam and you'll be good so hope you enjoyed the video please like subscribe and comment i'm gonna try to you know keep in touch um, with everyone and try to make this channel yours you know about the audience and not about me um so even though i'll have good ideas what i like to do is i like to sit back and say will you know would the old me pre oscp watch this video and sometimes i'll say no and i'll just delete the video and I'm, I'm just so mad but i'm trying to do it for our audience because like you know you know i'm good i just want to make sure all you guys are good so that's kind of the goal here so yeah communicate often i know about i know probably about four percent of you comment on youtube videos so i don't expect everyone that watches me to comment that's okay but you know don't hold your question in and if you uh you know if you watch other youtubers definitely do the same thing comment and ask questions some people answer some people don't because i'm a small youtuber i'm definitely going to try to answer everything that i can and that's just how we're gonna kick it so again like and subscribe and comment if you have any comments to uh post i'm damn main and we out Peace.